Hello there and welcome to this edition of Live Music and Me, a series of video shorts where we ask some of our friends to come on and talk about their gig memories. Today's guest is the Scottish actor and memorial device alternative national treasure, Colin McCready. I hope you'll enjoy this one. All the best now. Stay safe. Colin, good morning. How are we doing? Good, thanks. How are you, Brian? I'm very well, mate. Very well. Are you ready to have a go at Live Music and Me? Yeah, I'm very excited. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Okay, let's um, let's kick off then. So, nice easy one to start with, the first gig that you went to. Uh, it was Hipsway, Perth okay. City Hall, April the 14th, 1987. Well, that's quite uh, specific. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. it's uh, stuck in my memory because uh, growing up in Perth, nobody came to play gigs in Perth. Yeah. Uh, and obviously... 1987, year after the Hipsway album had come out, Hipsway were, you know, my favourite band at the time. They were a big band, you know, for teenagers and young people in yeah. Perth. And although they never had huge chart success, that album was taped and shared and played at Unders Discos. And, yeah. you know, I mean, everyone, everyone of that generation really loved Hipsway. So, unbelievably, I remember going into the, the local record shop, Gold Rush, one, one day, and the John or Bartley, the two brothers that ran it, one of them went, "Oh, hey, that's it. That's it. Hipsy tickets are coming in tomorrow." And we're like, "What? Wow! Oh yeah, Hipsy are playing at the City Hall." So right. it just it was, it was so unbelievable that like my favorite band was coming to Perth, and they came, and no other band ever came afterwards. <laughs> you know, until we really got the, the proper concert hall. Yeah. So yeah, that was it. Was just it was just such a brilliant gig, and you know, everyone from school was at it, and. Uh, it was just after Johnny McElhone had left, so right. the new bass player, but obviously they were playing, you know, the first album and uh, some covers, and, you know, Skin was just such a fantastic front man and yeah. him such a brilliant guitarist, and they were supported by Kick Reaction. Okay, don't remember them. The no. Yeah, they, they, they were really good. So, yeah, yeah it, was, it was memorable. the best of times. Yeah, and as you say, uh, and Graham's still an iconic um, front man, isn't he? He's still got oh, that, he's a great that thing man. about him. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Okay, he's, a big, he's a big hunk of love. <laughs> I'm sure he'd be pleased to hear that. Uh, okay, then. So, what about the last gig you went to? Uh, the last gig I was at was on Saturday night back there, which was at the illustrious Barrowland Ballroom, okay. and it was Hamish Hawk. The Edinburgh songwriter and band of the same name, uh, yeah. and that was Hamish's Hamish Hawks' uh, first sellout Barrowland gig, and their biggest gig in their own right. And I think you might have been there as well. I was indeed. How good was it? Yeah, it's excellent. I think it's the, the fifth time I've seen them, and I've seen them from King, King Tut to also the the famous gig in Greenock Library. Absolutely, which was very entertaining. Yeah, yeah I just love them. Uh, I'm not particularly into new music inverted commas yeah. I tend to you know I listen to sex music and things but most of the music I tend to listen is slightly retro so yeah. um, I feel as if I'm up with the youth going to see him <laughs> but a lot of his influences are, are fairly iconic aren't they you know talking heads smiths and all that kind of stuff so um, divine comedy yeah, yeah commotions you know it's yeah. uh, you know very kind of world uh, you know the, the lyrics are very literary based, yeah. which uh, reminds you about the promotions. Yeah, that's really good shout. Yeah, it was a great gig. Magic. Okay, um, what about the gig that you travelled the furthest to get to? So this is a slightly... Wait, what's the word? I, I was on my way there ten anyway. Years. Yeah, slightly ten years. I was on my way, way there anyway to my honeymoon in <laughs> Reykjavik in Iceland. Okay. And this was two, 2002, and the week before, a certain American band had played the Barrowlands uh, on the back of their first album, which was The Strokes, and Is This It? Right. And it was the week we were getting married, so I, I never managed to get tickets or to go. It just wasn't on the on our horizon. So we got an Iceland Air flight from Glasgow and opened up the in-flight magazine, and what's on in Reykjavik? And that night, The Strokes were playing in, in Reykjavik. Right. And I looked up the venue and it was a place called Gatura Song. And then I looked in my guidebook and it was a kind of King Tut sort of place. Right. So I said to my wife, Simone, I said, right, we're in Reykjavik. We don't know anyone. 
we're just going to like chance it, blag it, say we're just absolutely just chance it uh, and do everything to it. And I said, you know, if we don't get it, no one knows us, so it's fine. We'll not, we'll not be embarrassed. Yeah. yeah. So we get to the hotel and we're checking in and I say to the girl behind the reception, oh, there's a band playing tonight. Uh, do, do you know how we would get tickets? And she said, oh, uh, is it the Strokes? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. She went, ah. We have these strokes at the bar. So we <laughs> go to the hotel bar and the strokes are sitting there. Ah, oh, magic. So she said, oh, oh, luckily the venue has chains and they are playing in our sister hotel's ballroom. Uh, would you like tickets? And I'm like, yes, let me phone. So she phoned and, you know, she went, oh, they are £30. And I thought she went £30 each, but I think they were 30 for two. Right. So she got us, she got us tickets, and we sort of walked past the strokes, kind of you know smiling, uh, go up, went away for food, came back, and we're having a drink at the bar, and then come back in after the sound check, and there was a Man United game on, and uh, Julian Casablanca comes and goes, "Hey, what's the score, man?" Right. Well, two 0 two 0 <laughs> How was your gig in Glasgow? <laughs> oh man, we love the Glasgow. Yeah. <laughs> he said, "You coming to the gig tonight?" I went, "Yes, we yeah, it's, it's our honeymoon." He went, "Oh, oh man, let me get you at the guest list." I went, "Oh, we just bought tickets." You know, I, I don't know anyone would reckon it. Yeah. So we went to this gig. I think I managed to find the tickets, uh, and it was in a oh brilliant a, hot, a hotel up, up, bought upside down. Going to turn it around. Go. Cool. Oh, sorry. Right. Perfect. That's ideal. Magic. A hotel ballroom. And it was like a Tuesday night in Reykjavik. And it was like very strange. When we went into the venue, everyone stood around the bar. No one went on the dance floor in front of the right. band. Okay. And it was people that was like pensioners and people in suits and young people. <laughs> and it was very formal. And then just before the strokes came on, people started walking one at a time onto the dance floor to get near the front. Yeah. Uh, and they just they played this fantastic one hour gig in a night in a you know a, a disco in a hotel yeah uh, in Reykjavik and we just it was absolutely fantastic it was just so memorable it was pre social media it was pre you know almost pre email so we couldn't tell anyone yeah uh, and then the next day at breakfast we're, we're sitting there and the bass player comes down and he's sitting reading Dostoevsky as he's having his breakfast so it was just a really memorable gig and you know probably the biggest band in the world at the time. Yeah, playing in a hotel. Yeah, they were biggest and coolest as well. I would, yeah, I would argue. Absolutely. Yeah, I think I saw them the tour after that. They played Reading and Leeds the following year, and I think he broke his foot or something. Yeah, uh, Julie Casablancas, and um, yeah. he comes on, and they did you know quite an active band, weren't they? and he did the whole gig sitting on a chair, which was yeah, I've seen the pictures, a bit weird. Yeah, yeah but uh, it was we still played great. Head Arena, and that was rubbish. Then the barrier collapsed, and right. I don't think I've ever seen them as good as that first gig. But... Yeah. Probably because it was in Reykjavik and you were on honeymoon and yeah, just was different. And it takes us on to our next question about your first gig with a partner. Yeah, so that's quite an interesting one. I was trying to remember back to <clears throat> so my current wife Simone. Uh, when we got together, it turned out that we'd been at loads of gigs at the same time. Right. You know, so there was. Uh, I think she was at the Hipswood gig in Perth. There was a love and money gig in Sterling she'd been at, and she actually produced pictures of which one of my friends was in the picture. Wow. So we were obviously like standing next to her and our friends, you know, like 10 years before we ever met. So we, we were probably at gigs together before we even knew each other. But I think the first one we went to together was Beck at the Usher Hall in Edinburgh. Okay. It was a great gig, about yeah. seven, I think, solo gig. Was that just about after Odelay and stuff then? Yeah, I think it was album oh, after that. Yeah, I think I'd sort seen him before at the SEC on the Odley tour. So yeah, I think it was '97. So I think it was maybe Mutations or right. I think, and it was just yeah. him. It was a solo gig. It was excellent. Okay, and so that was like a whole sliding doors thing then. You know, before that, really, right? You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Annoy- annoyingly, she, uh, Simone had been to see Stone Roses <laughs> at venue in '87, which I wasn't at. Right, uh, and that's one of those gigs that she always tops me with. Uh, yeah, the bet. coolest kind of band in the smallest venue. Yeah, like gig trumps. Yeah. Um, and what about that then? What about bucket, a bucket gig in the past that you wished you had got to? So. Obviously, you know, you could go with the Beatles or the Clash in uh, one of the pubs in Glasgow or the Jam, but uh, I just like I, I, listening to your programme with uh, 
with Ken. Yeah. Uh, I just would love to have gotten that gig at the Playhouse, which was the Bluebells, Aztec Camera, and uh, Orange Juice. Orange Juice, right. That would have been perfect. And the other one, uh, which I've actually got, some, one of my friends gave me this brilliant poster, and it was a gig in London, and it was... Um, okay, see that? It, friends Again it, and Fruits of Passion. Bluebells, right. Friends Again and Fruits of Passion. Wow. And obviously I was too young to see the Bluebells in their, their young heyday. I never saw Friends Again, who I would have loved to have seen, and Prince of Passion I would have, would have liked yeah. to seen as well, but a yeah. really good bill. So yeah, one, one of those, either the, the postcard one or Blue Bells and Friends Again, I think. Yeah, cracking. He told, he told a great story, didn't he, about watching Roddy Frame play guitar and basically wanting to pack up and go home. Yeah. This is, they were like a tin pot garage band compared to, to where yeah. he was at the time. Um, yeah, it, yeah, it's funny. Like of all of all the bands of of that kind of generation, I'm lucky to sort of got to know and bump into over the years in Glasgow. Roddy Frame's the only person mm. that I've never met. Mm, absolutely. Uh, so he's this kind of mystical, I think, because he's always been in London. So yeah, yeah. I, I've never met Roddy. Um, no, me neither. But yeah, I love it. I love his records. Yeah, me too. I managed to see the Blue Bells in the Bay Hotel actually in Gu- in Guruk in eighty four. I think it was. Oh. Oh, that would have been amazing. It was amazing, yeah. Uh, fantastic. I was at primary school. I've thought, well, touche, <laughs> <laughs> touche. <laughs> okay, then, what about um, a gig that most surprised you, good or bad? Slightly weird. Uh, okay. It was Paul McCartney at the SEC in 1990. Okay. Because surprised, obviously... Su- surprised you positively? Oh, absolutely. Or, yeah, okay. Because obviously I was aware of the Beatles. Yeah, uh, having probably like the compilation albums and and at nineteen ninety it was pre the kind of you know the big Beatles revival I think mm. uh, I'd watched the, I remember there was a, a documentary on twenty five years of Sgt Pepper's and obviously the the wings sort of bypassed me other than maybe Mulligan Tire yeah. so I just remember going to that gig and I think McCartney played like twenty five or thirty songs. Just every song I knew, you know, beyond the Beatles ones, like the Wings one, you know, Live and Let Die. I just didn't realise, you know, he had as many brilliant songs that weren't by the Beatles. Yeah. And to see him, it was your culture. I think it was actually meant to be a much bigger gig. And I don't think it sold. So they moved it inside to the SEC. Wow. Uh, I think it was maybe meant to be an open air thing. And so it was maybe, I don't know, eight, ten thousand. And it was just... It just made me realise, oh, there, there's much more to Paul McCartney than yeah. she loves you and love me do, which maybe was as much as I knew. Yeah, it, it was it was fantastic, and just to to have to have seen a Beatle was pretty good, I think. Yeah, have you seen him since that? No, no, no. We got. I, I think I, somehow we got someone gave me tickets and just went, oh, let's go with that. I think I went with my yeah. brother, and it was oh, it was fantastic. Yeah, I was lucky enough to see my Hamden, I don't know, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, something like that. And um, and I actually took both my sons there who were only maybe seven and five or something at the time. But it was it was kind of to take it really, just to, to say that we'd all seen him, you know, and um, it was wonderful. We talked about Mullick and Tyre, he brought out the pipe band, of course, for the yeah. the encore. Oh, man. you know. I think he might have done, he might have done that at the SEC as well. So, yeah. yeah, so I was like 18, so I just basically, I wasn't aware of... of Fully of his genius, and as I say, I think at that point the Beatles were in a slight, yeah, not yeah. as That's good you know, no, not as renowned as they, they they've gone on to be. Okay, very good. Uh, what about a great gig that you had a ticket to but missed? That's quite a hard one. Uh, or the a bad gig, or a bad gig. Uh, uh, just no, like no, the, no, the only one that sticks out was I remember buying a ticket to see a man called Manson in Edinburgh who were quite kind of just just after Britpop, they were a wee bit heavier. All oh, right, yeah, yeah. I yeah, think yeah. they were playing the venue. Playing quality. I think they were, you felt as if they were going to be massive. Yeah. And I think I'd got tickets for the venue and I was doing a play in Edinburgh at the time and I think it was the week before the play was open. It was a Sunday night and I was just absolutely shitting myself about <laughs> my lines and everything and I just like that. I can't go out. I can't. Yeah. I can't. I need to stay in and just like not focus and not drink and and, <laughs> and, I, and I didn't go. And I remember kicking myself like, "No, oh, this band Manson are going to go on and be like huge. They're going to be like yeah. an oasis or something." But 
for the well. So yeah, so that, that, that's the one I can specifically remember having the tickets and, right. and not going. I tend to like always go if I get tickets. I like. Yeah, yeah, me too. But there is the odd story. There's some really nice stories on some of the other ones, as you can imagine. Yeah. Um, no, me too. What about a gig that made you miss the last bus or train home? So uh, this this is a, a, a story that I really like. Uh, it was nineteen February 1989, and it was the week that I Don't Want a Lover by Texas had just come out. Yeah. And... I was, you know, so they obviously just did a single at that point, and there'd been so much hype about them. Obviously, made up a member from Hipsway, loving money. Uh, Stuart Kerr, the drummer, had been loving money. Johnny had been in Hipsway, not what images, and yeah. they played a lot of their early gigs in Dundee, which I think was because Stuart Clumpus, who ran the, the Dance Factory DF concerts, had Fat Sam's. So, they, so you would always read about them in the Courier Pop. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when I was that. At school, the Courier Pop Page was actually pretty good. It was, and, and Deacon you know, Blue as well. Yeah, and we couldn't go to, I couldn't go to any of the gigs they were playing because they were always <clears> for 18. <throat> so they announced, and they, they'd supported Texas Sport Love and Money at the Barrel Lines just before, but I couldn't go to that gig. I'd seen them the night, Love and Money the night before in Edinburgh and Texas hadn't played, so I was really annoyed that my friends had seen them in the Barrel Lines. Yeah. So we got tickets. I think they were playing art school, the venue and Fat Sam's in Dundee. So we got tickets for the venue because that was the only one under 18s we were allowed to. And we saw them there on the Friday night. They were fantastic, absolutely brilliant, so cool. Uh, you could just tell they were going places, uh, you know, brilliant guitar and Hammond organ, and just great, great songs. And obviously, yeah. Char- Charlene was so cool with a black and white Telecaster. Yep. So the Sunday night, we had tickets to go and see Martin Stevenson play at mm-hmm. Dundee Rep. Yep. So that night, Texas were on at like half ten at Fat Sam's. It was a Sunday night. They always had bands. And during the gig, Martin Stevenson said, oh, I'm, I'm going to see this band Texas afterwards at Fat Sam's. And, and me and my two friends are like, oh, oh our, our favourite band, they're playing. And Martin, we could speak to Martin Steve. And we're just like, oh, what are we doing? You know, we to get the train back to Perth. And it was a Sunday night. So the last train would have been about quarter past ten. Yeah. So the Martin Stevenson concert finished. And we phoned my friend's brother and was on the payphone and was like, <laughs> could you come and pick us up in Dundee at one o'clock in the morning? And he agreed. Oh, wow. So we go around to Fat Sam's, get in the queue, really big queue, get yeah. to the front. And the guy's like, oh, all right, boys, you got ID? And we're like, no. <laughs> he went, get to you. And we're like, oh, no, but we're 18. You went, they're not getting in. I mean, but we've come all the way from Perth and, and we saw yeah. that they're our favourite band and we saw them on we saw them on Friday night and we love them and, and the guy's like, you're not getting in. So he made us wait and he let was letting everyone in. And you know, we were plainly under 18. And then yeah. he just looked at us and went, In you go, boys. Oh. And we let us in. We oh. let us in. And we, we chatted to Martin Stevenson and, and that was the night that I don't want a lover charted. They went into the top forty. So they were the band were kind of buzzing. Yeah, and we got talking to Eddie, uh, the keyboard player, and Ali, the guitarist. And Ali gave me a glass a slide off the slide. Gave, yeah, yeah, he gave me this glass slide, which about three weeks later got dropped and smashed. Oh. So, so yeah, so we we saw this fantastic gig second time in a week. Got out at one o'clock, and we were at school at half eight the next day. So your lift turned up. Yeah, luckily. That's a friend, isn't it? Yeah. Excellent. Fantastic. I might have been at that gig, Fat Sums. Yeah, so yeah, maybe 89 or something. 89 or something? Yeah, yeah. I was living in, I, I certainly saw them there, so I don't know if it's the same gig. Yeah, Fat Sums was brilliant. Every Sunday yeah. night, there would be a different band. It was, yeah. Um, we, would, we would go through a lot from Perth, and oh, it was fantastic. I remember a lot of underage kids hanging about outside trying to get in, so... Yeah, me. <laughs> okay. What about the best support act that you've ever seen? That's a hard one. Um, I remember going to see, maybe not the best, but one of the oddest was I went to see a band, so maybe about 20 years ago, called Athlete, who were an English yeah. band, and they were playing Carolyn Academy. And they were supported by Snow Patrol, who at that point had been banging on for like quite a while. Mm-hmm. But that week, Snow Patrol had like charted, and I think with Run or you know that album, and 
half the audience was there to see Snow Patrol, and Snow Patrol got like a far bigger reaction than uh, Athlete did. Yeah, and about half the audience left when Athlete came on. <laughs> so yeah, it was at that point we're watching a band who were bigger than the the, the support yeah. were bigger than the band they were playing with. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't think of anyone. Obviously, you know, you would see all bands like Deacon Blue and Texas support people that went mm. on to be uh, big, big bands. Um, I can't think of anyone. I okay. can't think of like the Stone Roses or the Happy Mondays <laughs> or something yeah. like that. Sadly. No bother. Uh, what about the best music festival that you've been to? That's a good one as well. I'm not a big festival person. Yep. Obviously, I went to the original tea in the park in uh, Hamilton, yep. and then I went a couple of times to Balado. I'm not. I'm not really a fan. I'd, I'd rather. I'd rather see all the bands play yep. in smaller venues than go and have horrible toilets and queue up and drink crap. You know, I like tennis lager, but kind of not very good tennis lager. <laughs> hey. It's yeah. probably more like, you know, I, I don't mind an open air gig, you know, but I'm not, festivals aren't for me. I wouldn't, I don't think I would ever do camping. No, no, me uh, too. No, no me too. I, I quite like going up, I quite like going up to Rewind and school nights out there. Yeah. The yeah. Bluebells or Nick Hayward or, I always find that, I've been to quite a few, the Bluebells have played a few times, I've gone up and, you know, the, the beauty of knowing the legend that is Bobby Bluebell is, He's really good at getting you to meet people. So you get to meet folk like Nick Hayward. Uh, Legend. And, you know, and you get to see see what these guys look like from 30, 40 years ago. And Nick Hayward looks better than he did. Then. <laughs> uh, so yeah, no, I'm not. Yeah. No, I wouldn't. Obviously, you know, this, you know, the the big one in Barcelona looks really good, you know, with yeah, the bands that are play- yeah, yeah, the bands that are playing. And I look at that and go, oh, that would be quite good. But then I go, nah. Yeah. I'm just not a festival sort of guy. That's okay. Not me neither. Uh, what about a bucket gig that you're still hoping to go to? Someone you've not saw that you would like to see? Friends again. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. Touché, mate. Touché. yeah, no, I would really love you know what I mean? Yeah. Obviously, uh, I don't know, I just love that Friends Again album and I obviously mm. loved Loving Money and I love James Grant's work and I love the bathers and did you uh, see and I know did, that did you see Friends Again at all when no. they were playing? No, me neither. No, no. no. I've seen I've seen James do Friends Again songs with yeah. Chris. Yeah, uh, sure. And I've seen uh, Paul McGeehan do songs with Chris and you know, you've pretty much kind of seen yeah, friends again when Paul, James, and, and Chris have done stuff together. But I would just really like them to play the whole album uh, and see them, just see that. And I keep on saying, the, if I ever see them, are you going to do a friend again? Um, but in some ways, I think it's probably quite good that they, they don't. They, 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 just, yeah. they, they just leave it. But yeah, but, you know, obviously, I would have liked to have seen Orange Juice, Aztec Camera in their day. I didn't see Aztec Camera till like the late 90s. I didn't see the bluebells, you know, till later on. Uh, I just wish I'd been around Glasgow in nineteen eighty four to eighty eight, yeah. yeah. been able to go and see bands and hang about chimichungas and. <laughs> I, I was around to do that, but I was living in Greenock, so you you had the the travelling challenge. So there was only sort of so many times you could do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a good time for sure. Absolutely. What about the band or artist that you have saw the most? So I would imagine that it would have been it would be the bands that you know I liked as a teenager that have kept going. So again, people like Hipsy obviously didn't play for a long time, but then they they played a lot a few years back, and I probably saw them six or seven times. Then mm-hmm. I've probably seen like I used to go and see Texas a lot back in the day. And then recently, the past five or six years, I've probably seen them 10 times as well. Okay. Uh, Deacon Blue, I've seen quite a lot over the years. Uh, I loved them back in the 80s. And then I got to know uh, Lorraine pretty well from acting. Did, did of course. 
Joe's with Lorraine, did a play with Lorraine. So always like it's always great to go and see a band when you actually know them. Yeah. And you know, you maybe get to go uh, to the after show. Yeah. And I'm still that wee fifteen year old boy <laughs> from Perth. So uh, oh, Bluebells I've seen a lot. J- James Grant I've seen, I don't know, twenty, thirty times probably between Love yeah. and Money and Well. Most of the usual suspects. Yeah. yeah I've mean, probably seen quite a lot. Yeah. That's where all your pocket money's went, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now I just try and see if I can sneak in on guest lists <laughs> by, by being Bobby Bluebells plus one. Don't, uh, don't knock it, Colin. He's, he's my boyfriend. <laughs> don't knock it at all. Um, Favourite live music venue? It's so predictable. You can't, you can't say for the barrel arms, can you? You can if you, if you want. Yeah, yeah. Do you know? I mean, nowhere, nowhere is is, is gets better than it. Right. Just, just that thrill of walking down the gallery and the kind of, you know, it, it's not it's not so bad now. But I remember the first gig I saw the Barlands was Deacon Blue in nineteen eighty eight, and walking down the gallery then felt as a wee boy from Perth felt pretty scary. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it was it was a bit it was a bit wild. So you have that sort of slight fear. And then you have the flashing neon lights and the kind of madness of a Saturday night in the Barrowlands and the 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 retroness of the venue that's unchanged and you know the ceiling. I mean, I just love being in the place. Yeah. Um, and again, a Saturday night like Hamish Hawk and Saturday night right there was the most civilized I've ever seen the Barrowlands. Yeah. On a Saturday night, it was. Yeah. Um, I saw only saw one person getting chucked out and one person vomiting. So uh, it's normally it's about 10 yeah. times that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's just the best. Obviously, you know, I really like King Tut's as a great venue. Mm. St. Luke's is a great venue. You know, we're, we're kind of spoiled in Glasgow. Yeah, we are. Yeah, We've got such great places. Uh, and in, you know, Anywhere outside the city that you've particularly enjoyed going to? I used to like Fat Sam's. Fat Sam's in London. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There was nothing. It was a disco. But at that period in the 80s, uh, late 80s, when I would go through on a Sunday night and you could see, you know, every Sunday there was a different up-and-coming band. And if you'd have gone <laughs> back, maybe maybe you were there, but I, I can remember, like, my friend's brother saying, oh, you would see Prefab Strike one week, the next week you'd see The Smiths, then you would see The Fall, and, you know, like, every band played there from maybe 83 to about 91. Um Saw some terrible bands there as well. Yeah, me too. Uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, you just never, you know, and it was four quid or something to get in, so yeah. it was it was fantastic. No. Good venue, yeah, right. Okay, a uh, couple to finish. Then your best ever gig. That's like having to choose your favorite child <laughs> or your favorite pet. I've had all sorts of answers to this one. Yeah, well, obviously your your first gig and your first time in the Barrowlands, and uh, I remember a, a gig that stands out, which I suppose uh, I think yeah, I would probably say just because it was a kind of slightly be there moment that when I was I think it was nineteen ninety and a uh, Saints and Sinners in in St Vincent Street was getting turned into King Tut's Wawa Hut, which was just like the coolest name at the time. Yeah. And again, I remember going to the Gold Rush Records in Perth and one of the brothers that owned it went, oh, knew that we were like obsessed with all the Scottish man. We were like, oh, we've got a couple of tickets for that King Touch Wawa Hut opening. Do you want them? I think Love and Money are playing. And we oh. were like, eh, hey, aye. <laughs> um, so we got two tickets to go to the opening night of King Tut's. Wow. Uh, and it was literally an A to Z of like uh, Glasgow music talent. And Love and Money played, I think the Big Dish played as well, or okay. Stephen Lindsay. Stephen Lindsay. Uh, and Free Bar, I remember drinking oh. Mickey, Mickey's Big, Big Mouth Lager. Uh, <laughs> and we, we were standing we were standing in the, the bar area before going upstairs. And, I, and of course, I'd never been there. You didn't know what it was. Yeah. And in comes Ali from Texas. And of course, we were like, oh my God, it's Ali. It's Ali from Texas. And on his arm. It was the most surreal thing ever. He was with Maria McKee. Oh. So Ali was Lone going out with Maria McKee. Yeah. And of course, Maria McKee, Lone Justice fame. Uh, you know, uh, she drowned for Fargo Sharky. She was this cool California. You know, six months later, she was number one with Show Me Heaven. 
And uh, Ali introduced her and he just said, oh, this is my girlfriend, Maria. And us three wee guys from Perth are like, uh, John nearly hit the ground. <laughs> that, that, we, that we were chatting to Maria McKee with Ali from Texas. And then Love and Money played. And, you know, it was this, you know, this super cool venue. And, you know, we're like, oh, look, 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 there's Bobby Bluebell. And yeah. obviously I didn't know Bobby or, you know, I was just a spotty wee schoolboy who you would never have spoken to. Um and uh, again, I think just because it was an iconic night and seeing seeing a band like Love and Money play in such a small venue at that time was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's certainly one of the most memorable games. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, hard to top that, right? Yeah, it was, it was a good night. And that, um, night. my memory, is, is Real Gone Kid about Marie McKee? Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so uh, Deacon Blue supported <laughs> On Justice at the QM. Right. Thinking about eighty six or eighty seven, and I think that's why Ricky wrote that about about Marie McKee, and yeah. obviously she wrote a good heart that Feral Sharky covered, right? And then he wrote You Little Thief about her, I think. I didn't know that. It was his next hit? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Marie McKee's in a lot of songs. Isn't she has it? indeed. She has indeed. It tells you something. It does. Uh, and I've seen I've seen her live quite a few times, and she was. I think it's sort of the pavilion and maybe the concert hall. Uh, she was she's fantastic, brilliant yeah. solo album. Yeah, oh, I, would, I would love to have seen Lone Justice. Mm. No, I didn't see them. No. 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 Deacon Blue supporting Lone Justice at the QM. That would have been a good one. That's a good sport act. Right. One of my saddest uh, activities of life mm. is that I, I try to remember gigs I was at or when they were or who supported. And you can the list magazine has all their back archives from right. like eighty five to two or two thousand five, and you can go back and look at every single edition of the list, and it tells you. So if you think I went, oh, who did, did I saw Lloyd Cole play in October nineteen ninety? You can go to the list and find the listings, and you can see when they played, and who supported them. And sometimes I go off a night, you go down that rabbit hole of looking at yeah. the list, and you find gigs that you forgot you were even at. Yeah. I do that with Setlist FM if I'm it's a similar, taking back on, it's, yeah. It's very similar to that, but it'll yeah. just, as all the listings, or you'll go on, and, and it's the actual magazine's been scanned, so you'll see adverts for gigs that you were at. Yeah. So uh, I had, it ended up taking screenshots and going messaging my friends going, who did Indian give her support? <laughs> Was it Danny Wilson or The Big Dish? Yeah. And then you work out, he supported The Big Dish in Edinburgh and Danny Wilson in Dundee. Right. He must have a good yeah, memory yeah. as well. The Indian Givers, do you ever remember that? Then? No, I don't, no, not at all. One of the great stroke no. worst band, lost bands <laughs> in Scottish music. I don't, I don't, that's maybe why yeah, then. If you're ever sad, go, go in the list archive and you can you yeah. can go to like October the 12th, uh, 1988, and you can see that Nick Robertson and Slice were playing Fix in Glasgow. All right, I remember And the Fix. Lost Soul Band were playing the, the Oyster Bar in St. James. In Edinburgh, very okay. sad. I, I'm, a, I'm a bit sad like that, so I might take you up on that. Um, okay, then, to finish, one live album that we should all own a copy of. Again, like the festivals, I'm not a fan of the live album. Okay. I I think live music should be live. Okay. I think, you know, I like my albums and I like my gigs, and I've never been a great one for... I think I, I might only even have a handful of live albums. The one, despite that, the one that I'm going to say is a, there's a CD, which was a promo that came out in America, which is The Strokes Live in Iceland. Oh, no, the gig you were at. And it's the actual gig that we were having on our honeymoon. So I, I forgot about it, and I've actually got the CD, but yeah. like most people, I don't even know where my CDs are all in the garage. But I looked it up, and uh, yeah, you can still buy The Strokes Live in Iceland, and you can listen to it on... I think someone's put it on YouTube as well. Right. So my favourite live album would be Strokes. Live from Broadway, Reykjavik. Reykjavik in 2002, because I was you, there. Did you get a credit for that? No. I didn't <laughs> say. They didn't say. Congratulations. <laughs> the happy couple. Yeah. No. All right. That's a lovely way to finish it off. Um, Colin McCready, that was live music in me. Thank you very much for your time, mate. Thank you.